What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fandoms Anonymous. We're here today to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. New season is out. Last week, we got the first two episodes. Today, we're talking about episode three for season five of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. All right. So, the base for where they are is inside of the surface of the Earth. That's for where Cassius lives. If you know, he's the big bad, or per se, in this season. You know, telling who's the big bad. A lot of different people in protagonist situations. Oh, antagonist situation, I'm sorry. We see Simmons getting acclimated to life with Cassius. You know, they put that thing in her where she can't hear. Um, you know, she can only, she can speak, but she can't hear. Her vision is kind of impaired. It's kind of a way of, of control, in a sense. Not necessarily mind control, but control. Uh, Coulson and the team are getting acclimated to working on the ship, working on the life house, as they say. You know, they're getting acclimated to doing grunt work and things of that nature, but you know they have a plan to get themselves out of what they're in, all right? So Daisy wants to go and save Simmons, but Deke is trying to stop her. He tells her that, uh, he tells her that again, she was the one that destroyed the, the Earth. And he also talks about the multiverse. Now, here we go. This whole multiverse thing, the multiverse is coming to the MCU. We already know it's here. We got our first look at it in Ant-Man, the quantum realm. They're going back to the quantum realm and they're introducing the verbiage of the multiverse in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is talking about the multiverse. Infinity War is probably going to deal with some multiverse type stuff. And I got guaranteed your bottom dollar. That with all of this talks about Disney getting X-Men back, the multiverse stuff is really about to come into full fashion in order to pull all of that together. And hey, what more could you ask for? What more could you really, really ask for? All right. So he tells her that this might have not happened in your universe, but it's happening in mine right now as far as the Earth completely being destroyed. Because they just came from an Earth that had nothing wrong with it. Everything was fine. So could that monolith have transferred them to another part of the multiverse instead of forward in time? I really think that that's what happened. They were transferred to another part of the multiverse. So does that mean that there are two quakes? Because we can go over talking about with the Flash, with the different universes and the different Earths. You know, Earth 1, Earth 2. There's a bear on Earth 1. There's a bear on Earth 2. It's every, all characters. There's a character on Earth 1, Earth 2. Whatever the Earth there is, there are characters. All right? Just want to get into that real quick because that's very important. Coast and Mac and Yo-Yo are working on getting that scroll back that they got that allows them to see what's going on on the ship and to get in and out of different places, all right? Tess got sent by Grill to pick up a load she owed him, and she took Coulson and May with her and Mac, and they all went, and one of Col uh, Grill's right-hand men, he went with them as well because he thought they might have been up to something. Anytime they need Simmons to work with someone or to do something or to physically talk to her back and forth, they can flick her on and off where she can hear everything going on. Sorry for my shoe squeaking. I'm kind of moving around. Uh, she was asked to help a girl with seizures, but actually this girl has just recently went through teragenesis and she's an inhuman. Now, the question goes... Where did this little girl come from? Because one of the things that she said was, I went, you know, you all, we all go through this at age 18. So did she come from Adelaide? Is there another group of inhumans living somewhere else? I don't know, because that's kind of sporadic to me. It kind of didn't fit for me. Like, where did she come from? She said she went to Terra Genesis. Where was she? She had on the same type of clothes that some of the people had on that were just common people in the inhuman show, which I hope they never bring back, okay? So... Colson, Mac, and Tess, we go back to the MMA. They went on to get the double haul. Again, one of the Grills guys came with them. We moved back to Simmons working with the human girl. She can change her molecular density, which means she could go through walls or she can make herself solid, you know, by just changing. All right? She says she can't control her powers and she's supposed to show them off at her performance. But if she, she doesn't, her family could be hurt. And we're going to get to that in a second because that was kind of awesome. It gives you this little Thor Ragnarok vibe. We'll get to that in a second. We see more of the Colson and May relationship blossoming. Uh, Marvel is really moving forward with this whole cosmic thing. You know, we see them on the the, um, the Twirler. I think that's the name of it. We see them on that ship. They're out there in space. Marvel is really moving forward in the cosmic realm. They really are. Grill is watching his radar, and he sees Yo-Yo's metric moving rapidly, and he says, it's got to be on the fritz. But come to find out, it was all part of her plan for him, for him to check out her metric, for her to run in his office, run to the side door to give Daisy the scroll and to run back. Because you remember, her stuff, her powers, her human powers move based on heartbeats. And she was able to do it and get back without him noticing that she was gone, which I thought was pretty cool. All right? And as she was running, did I hear, did I hear some type of 
augmented variation of the Flash theme. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I know what I heard. I know what I heard. So let me know if you heard that too as well. As Tess and the others are headed to St. Simmons, Tess pulls out this globe uh, figurine that she had that Virgil, that belonged to Virgil. And Colson actually realized that the thing actually opened. And they opened it. Go, it was a missing knob to a drawer on the ship. They opened it up and there was a communicator that was still receiving some type of signal, apparently that was coming from the surface of the earth. So I wonder what that is as well. Now, I got an idea, but we're going to get to that at the end. Remind me to come back, guys. Remind me to come back to that. All right. So uh, they see the communicator and they realize that one of Virgil's, one of Virgil's bosses, not Virgil, but one of Grill's bosses, on the uh, that went with them on the ship, he caught them, but they knocked him out. So he knocked him out cold and get to get him off his rocket, so they could keep doing what they're doing. Simmons is still working with Abby to control her powers, and again, I wonder where did Abby come from? They, you know, they didn't explain that. Where did she come from all of a sudden? As soon as Simmons worked with the girl, they shut her back off. They're like, okay, thanks, Bloop. <laughs> you know, and she went back to. Uh, so that was kind of funny to me. Daisy was stopped by Deke from going to save Sam and saying that she should be more patient because they could get everybody could get killed for her actions. Basically saying, let's play this the long way. Let's meticulously go through this because one mistake could get all of us killed. All of us. And then that what what, what was the purpose of doing it for? Alright? So she ended up quaking him out the way, like, hey, you know, move, get out of my way. He said, Wow, there she goes, quake. The destroyer of worlds because that's what she's called because she's the one that destroyed the planet now if you guys have seen in some comic books in the past quake did matter of fact destroy earth she did it's, it happened so that's comic book canon right there all right so Coulson was playing with the communicator and he realized that a signal was coming from the surface of the earth uh, a queen named Basha came to watch a fight between Abby and this big tall beast of a man and it gave you that Thor Ragnarok feel they were letting him whoop this girl behind. I mean, this little girl is just getting slung everywhere. well. She get beat up, nose bleeding. It just was horrible until she focused on her powers. He punched her and his arm broke. He went to go grab her by the neck and she had her hand out telling him like, no, 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 do it. And her hand went straight through his body and killed him. So when she focuses on her power, she is very powerful and can really, really, really cause some damage. All right, so we get Daisy. She's making a maneuver her way through the through the uh, area. She's trying to get to where Cassius lives. Um, Daisy ended up finding some Cree while she was on the elevator, and she defeated them. Um, Mac, Man, Colson, and Tess got caught. And Tess trying to take the heat for it, but apparently Yo-Yo put some contraband on Gr uh, Grill's, uh, one of Grill's bosses, the guy that they went with him on the trip, basically. Put some contraband on him, and he ended up getting the flat for it, and Grill ended up putting him down for it. So, shout out to Yo-Yo. They've really been using her powers in a real special way this season. Uh, Daisy was able to break into Cassie's place, but she was caught in between these two walls that came around her and they had gas that come out. Come to find out, Deke is the one that ratted her out. Now, now, let's talk about that real quick. I truly believe that Deke did it to keep everybody protected, not just everybody that's in the lighthouse, himself, as Daisy as well, because he told her at the end when she said, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, he said, I'm sorry, sweetheart, I'm just playing the long game. So this is him pushing forward what he really wanted to do in the beginning to stop Cassius and to save Jim and to save everybody else. This will turn will show that he's loyal to Cassius by snitching out, snitching her out, and will also keep the people keep people from dying. So I understand what he did. I saw that going on right there. I saw that little verbiage right there. I'm just playing the long game. So I got you, Deke. I understand what you got going on. Um, we move forward, we get back to the ship. The team was working on the communicator to see who was leaving the transmissions. And apparently you can still go to the Earth's surface. And uh, that's where people are also sent for their bad crimes. And we see that general or that boss that was working for Grill get ate up by those blue roaches. All right. Now, we go back to the beginning of the season where we see the guy that takes his skin off, takes the human skin off, and he goes and takes a bath. Could he be one of those blue roach creatures and could he be on the surface of the earth? That's just something to think about. I want to know what you all thought about this recent episode. Let me know in the comments below whether you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on Facebook. It's Ages of Seal, Season 5, Episode 3. We'll see you guys in another video.